Okay. Uh, hello and welcome back. Uh, I hope that you have seen my uh, videos on uh, theory of demand and elasticity of demand. And uh, here in this video, I'm going to explain you the concept of uh, supply and elasticity of supply. And you're going to find that uh, the concept in this chapter is uh, very similar to the concept that we have seen in uh, theory of demand and elasticity of demand chapter. So let me uh, start this chapter and uh, I'll first explain you the meaning of supply. As you can see on the screen, the here the definition of supply is given and the definition run like this where we say that supply of a commodity refers to the quantity of a commodity which producer or seller are willing to produce and offer for sell at a particular price during a, a particular period of time. As you can see here, the definition is very similar to what we have seen the definition of a demand. Uh, here, there are minute changes where we are uh, talking like this. We are saying like this that uh, supply uh, is a uh, topic which is related to a uh, producer where we have seen in the theory of demand. I told you that demand is a to topic which is related to consumer and here we see that supply is a topic which is related to producer. So according to this definition, supply actually mean the quantity of the commodity that the producer is willing to produce or willing to sell that is what actually uh, the difference lies so it may it, there may be a situation in the market where the actual supply and the willingness of the sub, willingness of the producer to sell the commodity may differ I'll let you know that uh, under what condition the willingness and the actual sell can be uh, the differ but the point is when we are defining the uh, definition of supply it is very important for us to understand that in the definition of supply we are not talking about actual quantity of commodity that is sold in the market but we are talking about the willingness of producer to sell the commodity in the market there are two important keywords as you can see in the definition one is called price and the other is time so these important three uh, these three keywords actually bring the meaning in the definition of a supply so in my next slide i'll show you the three important keyword we'll have a small discussion on those uh, keyword and then we'll move further uh, into this chapter right so <clears throat> i'm going to show you my second slide as you can see here in this slide, uh, you can see the first important keyword is highlighted where we are talking about desired quantity and in this uh, definition it is told that uh, the supply uh, is defined as a de desired quantity in the sense that the producer willingness to sell may not be same as the actual sale. So that is what we are uh, talking in the definition of a supply. So there can be some situation in the market where the amount of the commodity that the producer is willing to sell may not be uh, same uh, actually what it is sold in the market. Say suppose if I take one small example of uh, natural calamity uh, or I can take examples of uh, say change in the policy of the government then it may happen that uh, due to some natural calamity like flood earthquake uh, the producer is willing to sell uh, more commodity in the in the market because the, there may be a need of that commodity in the market in on an urgent basis but due to the lack of resource availability to the producer the producer is not willing uh, producer is not actually able to uh, produce so therefore the actual amount of good that is uh, sold in the market and the willingness of the producer uh, is uh, uh, varying here uh, due to the uh, factors like natural calamity or due to the uh, government policies or some some factor like this so that is what but the conclusion is that when we are talking about supply we are actually talking about willingness to uh, supply not actu uh, actual supply so please children uh, keep this in, in your mind that uh, sub when we are talking about supply we are talking about willingness to sell right i'll go to the next important uh, feature here as you can see it is told that related price if you remember i told in the video when i was explaining you theory of demand i told that demand the concept of demand or definition of a demand is very much related to price so here also in theory of supply the supply is also very much related to price and it may happen that when the price of uh, any commodity is ch uh, changing uh, the sub, uh, the willingness uh, of the seller or the producer may also change. So uh, I have taken a small example to make you understand that why price is an important uh, keyword in the definition 
of a supply as you can see here it is written that a producer may not be prepared to sell his produce at a prevailing market price of rupees 400 so it may happen in the market that if the producer feel that the price of the commodity is not actually uh, what they should uh, get then he may not be ready to sell any commodity or any quantity of the commodity at a lower price but when the price of that commodity increase to 500 500 then he is ready to sell so the point is that supply depend upon the uh, price so if the price is according to the according to the uh, producer desiredness or according to what producer are thinking then they will be ready to supply the commodity in the market otherwise they are not going to supply the commodity in the market so that uh, shows that uh, why price is an important keyword in the definition of a supply and finally if you look into um, uh, the third important keyword then we are talking about that uh, supply is also a flow concept because uh, uh, as i told you earlier uh, in my previous videos that uh, there are two concept what we uh, go through generally that is static and flow static is something where, which is not related to time and flow is a concept which is related to time and why we are telling that uh, supply is a flow concept because it is related to time it uh, at a particular price uh, the quantity of the supply the quantity of the good that the producer is willing to supply may differ from one time to another time so that is what the point is so uh, that is what during the time of uh, emergency uh, this producer may be willing to uh, supply more of the commodity and in a normal situation the producer may not be uh, willing to supply uh, more of the com commodity in order to keep the uh, supply less than the demand to take the uh, uh, advantage of the market situation so that uh, shows that why we are telling that supply is a concept that is also related to uh, time so these are the three important keyword and i hope i have explained you the three important keyword uh, that need to be present when you are defining uh, supply right uh, you can see here the fourth point uh, there is a small note which uh, or i may uh, i want to bring uh, your concentration here to make you understand the difference between the two important uh, word that is stock and supply sometimes we generally uh, say that the stock and the supply are synonymous but they are actually not uh, there is a, a difference between the word stock and supply uh, we say like this that stock refers to the quantity of the commodity available for sale so the amount or the quantity of the commodity that is available or that is produced by the uh, producer to uh, offer for sale in the market is actually a concept of a um, concept of a stock but the willingness that how much from that stock how much from that stock a, a producer is willing to offer for sale that is a concept of a supply so stock can be say 100 unit but it may happen that the producer is willing to uh, sell uh, 60 unit uh, from that stock in the market so that 100 unit of production is actually a stock whereas uh, the 60 unit of good that the producer is willing to offer from that stock in the market that is what actually the supply so there is a minute difference between the two word that is stock and supply so this is what actually uh, definition of a supply and the features of uh, definition of a supply so let us go to the next slide and find what is there in the next slide as you can see here the heading is type of supply if you remember in my previous videos i told that there are different types of demand also so here also I'm, we are going to go through different types of supply so as you can see here the first type of supply that we see is a individual supply i'll not go uh, for the uh, things that is written here i'll just uh, try myself to explain you what actually the word individual supply mean so individual supply is nothing but in this concept of individual supply is like this that the amount of the commodity which a single firm in an industry is producing at a particular price and at a uh, given period of time so the amount of the good or the quantity of the good that a single firm in an industry is producing at different prices is is the concept of individual supply and hence you can see that i have drawn a single supply curve here it may uh, if i give you one example let us uh, take one example i think then it will be uh, easier for us to understand what actually the individual concept of individual supply is telling suppose if i talk about toothpaste industry so industry is a wider concept whereas firm is a uh, narrower concept when we are talking about toothpaste industry then there are very small firms who are actually producing toothpaste 
it may uh, let it be Colgate. So we know that Colgate is one of the firm uh, who produce toothpaste. Similarly, Pepsodent is another firm. Patanjali is another firm. So like this, there are many firms who are actually producing toothpaste. The point is that how much quantity of uh, toothpaste that Colgate is producing at a given price and during a period of time is a concept of individual supply. So you can see here in this diagram, this is a, uh, a supply curve uh, where in the horizontal axis we are measuring quantity and in the vertical axis we are measuring price. And when the price is uh, say uh, the figure is very small, so let me uh, maximize it so that you can see this uh, in a better way, right? So I hope now you can uh, see this uh, figure in a much uh, easier way. Now see, uh, it is the, according to the supply curve of Col Colgate firm. Let us take the example that this is a supply curve of a Colgate and uh, what we can see here that when the price is $25, at that price following the supply curve, the Colgate is willing to supply two unit of the good. Whereas when the price increased to 50, the Colgate wants to now supply four unit of the good. So this is the supply curve of a single firm. Like this, there can be many firms who at this prices are willing to supply different quantity of the uh, different quantity of toothpaste. So when we are talking about all the firms together, that is the quantity of the commodity that all the firm together want to uh, want to produce, then that concept is actually called market supply. So you can see the second topic of us. Uh, okay, let me just first uh, adjust this. I hope if I can adjust, then uh, it will be easier for us to uh, further go through it, right? So you can see here, the second topic is a market supply. And according to this topic, we are saying that market supply is nothing but market supply is the quantity of the commodity that all the producer in the economy uh, is willing to produce. That means all the producer for a commodity are willing to produce at different prices. And of course, the time is included in the definition. So you can see the uh, figure again. Uh, I'll again maximize so that I can uh, help you out to understand this. Uh, okay, let me uh, see if I can uh, adjust a little bit. Okay, now, so have a look. Uh, this is a uh, figure or this is a supply market supply curve and we are getting this market supply curve when we are uh, um, taking into consideration the supply curve of firm one and the supply curve of firm two. So this is an individual this is an individual supply curve of firm one and individual supply curve of firm two and uh, summation of this two supply curve give us a market supply curve. So let me just uh, try to explain what is actually a uh, market supply and how we are getting a market supply curve. You can see here. Uh, when the price, say suppose when the price is $1, the firm 1 following its supply curve is willing to produce 10 unit of a commodity. And uh, at the same price of $1, the another firm who is also producing the same commodity, he is uh, ready to produce uh, 10 unit of the commodity. So I, we can see from the uh, figure that at price $1, both the firm are producing uh, 10 unit of the commodity. So if I want to know then what is the uh, quantity of the commodity that is supplied in the market, then it is actually the summation or addition of 10 plus 10. So we are getting here 20. So at $1, the total supply supply of the commodity in the market is coming 20, uh, 20 unit. When the price increased, Farm 1 has also increased its production to or willingness to 15 and here when the at same price that is $3, Farm 2 is also increasing it to 15. So the total market supply is coming 30. But of course, I want to uh, bring one thing here uh, into your notice that it is not necessary that both the firm will uh, react in the same manner. It may happen that at uh, $3, Farm 2 instead of producing 15 uh, is willing to produce uh, 20. So in that case, the total quantity of uh, good that will be supplied in the market at three dollar will be 35 so that is how we obtain the market supply curve or we say that market supply curve is a horizontal summation of individual supply curve so these are the two types of supply curve that we have discussed here if i go for the next slide then you can find that uh, we are basically discussing about three uh, more type of supply as you can see here one is called market period supply short period supply and long period supply so market period supply the concept of market period supply is such where we are saying that uh, it is that time period where the time period is too short to bring any change in the supply right what do i mean i mean that the time period for a producer is so short 
that even if the price is changing the producer is unable to change the quantity supply that producer is unable to bring any change in its willingness to uh, sell that uh, that concept is actually called uh, or that situation is called market period supply and as you can see here uh, uh, this is a figure or this is a supply curve of market period supply you can see from the uh, market period supply curve is a vertical line and when the price is rising the quantity supply remains same the quantity cannot be changed because the time is very short for a producer to bring any any change in its uh, willingness to produce so that is what actually a concept of a market period supply uh, of course uh, when we will proceed further in this uh, topic i'll show you uh, i'll uh, give some more examples to explain what is market period supply when we will go uh, when we will go to a topic called exception to the law of supply again this topic will come and we'll have a discussion with some more example okay there is a second type of supply uh, curve that we see that is called short period supply so short period supply refers to time period which is not sufficient to make major changes okay so you can see here the um, difference we are saying that there is a another type of supply curve that we get and that supply curve what we get is a situation that is called short period supply so here the time period is not uh, very short what we have just now told in a market period uh, supply here the time period is not very short here the time period is uh, uh, sufficient enough to bring minor changes in the quantity uh, supply minor i'm not using the word major but the time is not that much sufficient so that i can bring major changes in the quantity supply what do i mean i mean actually i mean that the time period is uh, just sufficient to bring small change in the quantity supply and this change can be uh, brought by bringing a change in the variable factor of production now you may be wondering that what is variable factor of production uh, of course please don't get confused uh, there are some more chapters that we will go through where the name of the chapter is theory of production where uh, I'll explain you what is variable factor of production and what is fixed factor of production but uh, okay for time being I'll help you out to uh, understand what is this variable factor of production in short uh, many economists have an opinion they have an opinion that any commodity can be produced by using labor and uh, capital capital means we are here we are talking about machineries so labor and machine together work to produce any good and the time period here when we are talking about short period we are saying that the time period is uh, so short that i cannot uh, bring change in the machines that means i cannot import or i cannot uh, use uh, bring uh, new machines what i can do in order to increase the supply i can increase the labor in the economy because labor is a variable variable factor of production right so that is what uh, uh, the economists are uh, trying to say here that short period supply so short period supply in case of short period supply we get a supply curve like this you can see on the screen i am pointing with a pointer so this is a supply curve which is a uh, little inclined in nature it is not very uh, it means it is actually steeper in nature it is not very inclined uh, not very flatter but in uh, steeper this steep steep supply curve is a uh, figure that we get or I may say this steep supply curve is a representation of short period supply I'll, I will again explain you what is steeper and flatter supply curve represent so this is a steep supply curve and it represent that when there is a change in price as you can see here the price was initially this much and when the price increase the quantity was initially this and now it has increased to this as you can see from the diagram itself that the ma magnitude of change in price is much more as compared to the change in quantity supply so there is a large change in price but there is a small change in uh, quantity supply and so we are saying that short period supply is a time period where uh, the pr producer can bring a small change in quantity supply not very much so that is what actually the concept and uh, if the supply curve is in uh, steeper uh, then we say the nature of this supply is inelastic in nature i hope you remember the difference between inelastic and elastic that i have explained uh, you while explaining you the theory of demand so here also uh, elastic and inelastic the topic will come and we'll have a discussion but for time being you just remember that when supply curve is steeper the nature of the uh, elasticity is inelastic and finally coming to the third type of supply curve that is called long period supply 
we say like this uh, that long period supply is uh, that supply where the uh, time period is uh, long enough to bring major changes in the quantity supply again i repeat i'm saying that long period supply is uh, that time period where the time is uh, sufficient enough to bring major changes and this is the reason why uh, we get the supply curve like this so in case of long period supply we get a flatter supply curve and the flatter supply curve represent that even if there is a small change in price there will be a large change in quantity supply so that is what actually the long period supply curve uh, tell us so this is what actually the this is what the different types of supply that we have so let us uh, quickly see what are the types of supply we have discussed so far so we have discussed about individual supply we have discussed about market supply uh, market period supply short period supply and long period supply so these there are five types of supply that we have discussed okay so i hope you are very familiar with uh, this topic that is determinant of supply i have explained this uh, in my previous videos also where i was talking about determinant of demand i told determinants or factors affecting demand or determinants and factor affecting supply are very similar concept where we are concerned about to know that how the producer willingness to supply will change when there will be a change in uh, the factors when there will be a change in the economic conditions so you can see here uh, very well the first factor that can affect the producer willingness to supply is the price of the commodity right and if we are talking about price of the commodity it's very uh, normal to say that every producer wants to earn profit and they can earn profit uh, by increasing the price so if the price of the commodity is rising in the market due to the market condition that is the time period where the producer will be uh, willing to produce more of the commodity to take the uh, advantage of the market situation and hence we are saying that price is a very important factor that affect the suppose if i being one producer and i come to know the good that i am producing if the price of that good rises in the market due to some market condition i will definitely want to produce more of the good to take the advantage of that situation to take the advantage of the market condition so price is a very important factor that affect the supply and of course the price and quantity supply uh, is having a direct relationship that means when price of the co any commodity rise uh, the willingness of the producer to produce the commodity also rise so we see that price and quantity supply is directly related and similarly uh, if i talk uh, in opposite sense then when price of the commodity fall the producer get demotivated and they produce less of the commodity so price and supply is having a direct relationship you can see here the second important factor that affected the supply is called goal of the producer uh, being a producer there can be a several goal uh, it may be that producer wants to earn profit. It may be that the producer wants sell maximization. Sell maximization, I'll let you know what a sell maximization is. Uh, there are many producers uh, who are not concerned about profit. What they are concerned is that how much quantity of good that they are selling in the economy. So that is also uh, one of the important objective or the goal of the producer. And finally, what we see, the third important goal of the producer is risk minimization. So that is very important for all the producer, risk minimization and all of us in our life uh, we want to minimize the risk nobody wants to take the risk so similarly the producer also want to minimize the risk and uh, the, these are the three uh, goal that I have taken uh, taken here but there can be uh, even more than these three goal but on the basis of these three goal we are going to discuss that uh, how these goal affect the quantity supply uh, by the producer so suppose if a producer wants uh, have a goal of profit maximization or sell maximization then we definitely they are going to produce more of the commodity so as to uh, acquire the status and the prestige in the society sometime the producer also uh, has the goal of uh, goodwill they uh, sell maximization or goodwill so if they want to produce or if they want to capture the market so even at a less price they will supply more of the quantity if they want to capture the market first so we can take the example of a uh, uh, reliance geo uh, we know that when G uh, reliance geo was introduced in india 
uh, it was given free to its customer is simply because the Reliance Geo wants to capture the customer. Uh, and that is the reason that uh, why the geo was given even at a free or free cost so that is one of one important objective and because of that objective because of the cell maximization the producer produces more of the commodity finally coming on to the third important goal as you can see on the screen that is risk minimization and of course if a producer is a, a, a producer who is actually uh, having a goal of risk minimization so he are not he is not going to produce uh, much of the commodity because producing much of the commodity may uh, fall or may make uh, him to fall into a trouble so he will be producing less of the commodity so that is what actually uh, with different goal uh, we see the quantity supply uh, vary so with the uh, profit maximization and sell maximization the producer produces more of the quantity quantity supply uh, is more but with a goal of risk minimization the quantity supply is going to reduce in the economy so that is how uh, the goal of the producer affect the uh, quantity supply by a producer and finally coming on to the third point there are many points there are actually uh, i have taken nine uh, factors to explain you the determinant of supply uh, but in your book there are even more so let us come to the third important factor that is natural factors as i was talking uh, to you that even if the producer want to supply more but if the natural factor does not permit him to produce more then definitely the quantity supply in the market or the quantity supply by the producer get affected so uh, you can see here the point is written that natural factor like drought uh, flood unfavorable climatic conditions so these are the few uh, natural factor that adverse that adversely affect the quantity of good that a producer is willing to uh, produce and supply in the market so let us take the example of a uh, agricultural commodity we know very well that agriculture in india is still monsoon dependent and uh, we see sometime that even if the producer want to produce more of agricultural commodities but due to the failure of monsoon in uh, any of the year we find the commodity that is being supplied by the farmer uh, reduces and that shows that natural factor is one of a very important factor that can affect the quantity supply by a producer i hope you have understood my point that how natural factor is affecting the quantity supply uh, by a uh, by a producer so this is how there can be several examples but i'm not right now i'm not going for these examples uh, when we will meet in the class if you have any discussions we'll have uh, i'll uh, definitely i'll help you out to clear your doubts and we will talk about some more natural factor and how these factors can uh, affect the quantity supply in the economy right so let's see that if we can uh, talk about some more factors then in my next video I'll continue with uh, this chapter where I'll show you some uh, more factors and uh, then we will talk about the elasticity of supply, uh, types of elasticity, exceptions to the law of supply and many things are, of course, there are many things that I'm going to uh, tell you regarding this chapter. So let us come to uh, some more factor like input price. Uh, as you know, input price is nothing but it is actually the cost of production of a commodity. So if the price of a commodity is given in the economy, and uh, due to some reason or other if the cost of production reduces if the cost of production of the producer get reduced then the profit margin of a producer increase i hope you can understand the uh, logic i am telling that the price remains same suppose if a uh, if a mobile phone is produced and the pr and the price of uh, that mobile phone in the market is uh, 35000 rupees and the cost of and the cost of production or the cost that the producer has to bear for this phone is 30000 rupees so the uh, he the firm is making a profit of 5000 but due to some reason or other if the cost of production reduce if the cost of production say now reduce to 25000 so if the price is 35000 still and the cost of production is reduced to 25000 so now the producer is able to make a profit of 10000 rupees so he will be definitely willing to produce more of the output during that time and that is the uh, logic behind this so the logic tell us that when the cost of production reduces the quantity supply increases and if the cost of production increase there will be profit margin of the producer will fall and definitely it will affect the quantity supply uh, by a producer so this explain that how input price affect the fact uh, quantity supply by a producer 
Of course, price of the related commodity is uh, another important factor that affect the supply. I, I'll give you one small example to explain how this affect. Let us take the example of tea and coffee as uh, we are talking about a related good. So related good can be substitute good or uh, complementary good as I have told in my previous videos. So suppose if the price of uh, coffee rises up, if the price of coffee increase and there is a large, forget about what, what is the demand. Let us think that the demand remains same. Demand, uh, we are not uh, taking demand into consideration. So if the price of coffee increase, whereas the price of tea remains same, then the producers, those who are, actually, those who are now producing tea, may find that due to the rise in the coffee, there is a large profit margin, uh, margin in coffee and they are going to shift themselves from producing tea to coffee. As a result, when producers are going to come from, uh, uh, will uh, shift their profession from producing tea to coffee, the quantity of uh, coffee that will be produced in the economy is definitely going to rise because now the number of producers who are producing coffee is increasing. So that also show that the price of the related good is also one of a very strong factor that affects supply. And finally, coming on to the last point as uh, I will end here uh, for today and then we will continue in some more videos. You can see a technique of production. So that is a second important factor that affect uh, quantity supply and we know very well that if the firm has a advanced technique of production, then definitely the quantity supply will be more. And suppose if the firm uh, is still dependent on traditional method of production where he is using uh, outdated tools, tools and technology, then the quantity supply will be less. So that shows that how advanced technology or technology is an important factor affecting supply so if technology is advanced definitely the supply will be more and if uh, there is an outdated technology then the quantity supply will be less so that uh, is a, that are the factors so i have shown you six factors that affect uh, supply uh, next video we will have a discussion on three more factor and then we'll go for discussing about the concept of supply function uh, supply schedule law of supply uh, exceptions to the law of supply and supply curves so, okay so uh, i'll end here uh, hope you are going to go through this topic uh, uh, and in case you are having any doubt uh, when we will meet in the class we'll have a discussion on uh, all your doubts right thank you